Hi guys, what's up? It's Kinsey. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with my Dolly mug. By the way, I am tagged in Dolly Parton stuff every single day. I'm so glad that I come to mine. Okay, I need to get comfortable. If you guys um, have kept up with the vlogs, I got these bar stools um, probably like a year ago. Never fully set them up with the intention of eventually replacing them, and I finally have new ones being delivered on February 4th. Mark your calendars. I asked on Instagram for some questions from you all. I feel like we've been so close lately. I've been doing a lot of Q and A's actually. Question number one, how did you become a full-time podcaster? A lot of the questions are like people who are new, who probably are just following my Instagram, but a little background on myself. I grew up in Texas. I grew up in McKinney, which is north of Dallas. And then I started my YouTube channel when I was 15, turning 16, moved to LA a month before my 18th birthday, which was my senior year of high school, graduated high school early, started working in LA, started college early. At that point, I was just doing online classes. Then I decided I wanted to go to an in-person class. I went to a very like untraditional, non-traditional, clearly this school didn't offer me, um, college that was just like not normal, but I ended up graduating with my bachelor's in business. And when I was in college is when I started my podcast with Dear Media. So I was already full-time social media before I started a podcast. So I guess that's kind of how I was full-time. That's how it started. As far as like becoming a full-time social media person, I think it would have been like YouTuber first. I don't even know, do you guys consider me a YouTuber or like a podcaster? Cause there's so many people who like only listen to the podcast too. So I like actually I'm curious to know, but I'm guess if you're watching me on YouTube, probably YouTuber, I don't know. But when I started YouTube, you have to keep in mind, I was able to make money and also I was working a job. I've always worked pretty much my whole life. My mom owned businesses and I worked for her. I always just liked working and I loved having my own money and things like that, even though I was making like literally nothing when I was like working for my mom. But um, I like, 14 or 15, you can start working in Texas at certain places. Um, and then I ended up working as like a swim aide and, and that was obviously seasonal. So then I got a job at like a pizza shop in my hometown that has the best lobster ravioli, but honestly like the scariest bosses ever. Like in my town, they're known as like, they're terrifying. It's not even terrifying, like, terrifying is like not the right word. They're just really intimidating, like, they were very harsh. And at that point, I wasn't making that much money on YouTube, but I was like, I will make more money on YouTube if I just did YouTube instead of this job. So I was only there for like a month, but I got my friend's jobs there, so they ended up working there forever. But anyways, my point being that when I started social media, I was in high school still. So the pro of that was that I didn't have to pay for my living yet. Like I didn't have to pay rent and things like that. Uh, the con was that I basically gave up a ton of my like high school experience which I wanted to do at the time. I look back now and I'm like, I kind of regret it a little bit. Maybe that's just because I hang out with people from home. <laughs> Whoa. I have this theme in my life where I look back on and the regret that I have is not acting my age and not just like having fun. Like I feel like I put so much pressure on myself and I was like, no, I have to work and do this. And like, who cares about like social life and whatever. I've made that change in the past year, but I will say that is a regret it's not a fully of regret I have, and I don't regret graduating early. There was like so many other reasons that that happened. I wish I would have enjoyed it more. Looking back on, I loved my high school. I didn't love schooling and like, I don't know, whatever. No one cared and no one asked about that. But basically what I'm getting at is that I didn't have bills and I didn't have to immediately support myself. So I was able to build a platform in which would end up supporting me. I did have help the first few months of moving out. I was still in high school, um, but that was only the first few months. Obviously, I wouldn't have been able to do that. I'm incredibly thankful and grateful, but it's also, I just got lucky. One, it's obviously privileged that I had a little bit of help, and then two, I also had a dad who was incredibly supportive and was like, this is the smartest thing for you, and three, I wasn't supporting myself already, I was 16. So, how do you maintain such good relationships with your parents? So, I feel like this probably comes up because I talk about how I get coffee with my dad every week. Preface this, I love my parents so much and they're incredible and they've done great, the absolute best that they could have and like, incredible. But obviously with any sort of family relationships, it gets really tricky. I would not say I've always had the best relationships with my parents at all. Um, we, ha I grew up in a really, really weird dynamic of a family, a very, and again, I love my family so, so, so much, but I grew up in a very dysfunctional family with a really, really, really bad divorce, and that definitely affected my relationships with my parents at times, and it wasn't like 
this I don't know I don't really talk about I don't really talk about this stuff online really because it like involves other people and that's kind of like my policy but it is a lot of like my story and like my childhood um so if I write a book one day I'm sure that will be a lot of it but anyways I just had really hard things happen many hard things happen growing up in my family so I wouldn't say I've always had the best relationship with my parents, but um, I definitely do and I literally wouldn't, I literally just said I wouldn't be here without my dad. I love my mom so much. So it just like goes back and forth. Honestly, I don't think anyone has like incredible perfect relationships, but because I do post sometimes with my parents, I guess that's probably why. But anyways, if you've ever been the kid or even the adult that's like looking at another person's family and like wishing that you had those dynamics not that you wish you didn't have your family but wishing that things were just different um i have been there many times but it's very important to note that like no one's family is perfect and honestly families are just really messy so at the end of the day there you go what was your biggest mistake while in college there's one that comes to mind i started to listen to other people over myself i was in a very vulnerable place i've talked about this before um and whereas before i really maintained like my sense of individuality that's a really weird word to say um as i got into like a harder place i think the end of that like the last half i really lost myself and it took a long time for me to get back to where i'm at now um i think that would be it but other than that i really don't regret much like i think like i said before i look back and i'm like oh i wish i would just had fun or been more whatever like i also am so grateful because that did get me here and i love my life and i'm you know whatever i think there's certain points certain seasons for everything you know when have you known it was time to break up with someone i think about in relationships like when i've broken up with someone it's really hard for me to break up with someone i think that is a very difficult thing and i'm also very loyal and i'm the person to be like no it'll work like we can work through it and like i would rather just like work through it with the person there than like find someone else which is not always the healthiest thing by any means i feel like if you're thinking about it it might be i don't know i don't there's like a blanket statement answer if any of you guys have better advice like leave it down below there's definitely been times where i've dated people that i really liked and i had so much fun with and i like adored them but i knew deep down that they were not right for me and something was off like i had like a constant like stream of anxiety and i blamed it on like alcohol or something else but really it was like deep down i knew that they were not good for me at that time so for me personally it's like i just feel like i know deep down whether or not i want to admit it to myself and the danger with that is that sometimes it will get so 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 deep down that you really don't even know anymore like am i in one of my like longer relationships like if i would have just finally sat down and like unpacked everything from the past like year or two i would have as i've got went through that i think i would have realized that that wasn't what i wanted and deep down i knew but i was just so afraid of changing my mind that i just refused to do it if you guys are going through a breakup though listen to my podcast i always talk about this breakup boot camp with amy she's a breakup coach and she has a book that's like the science of rewiring your brain with breakups science of breakups i don't know anything that has like brain health attachment theory science breakups like i'm always so interested in that i actually think i even made lauren read it i made a lot of my friends read it and it was so helpful in regards to breakups um it's not what you think it sounds maybe a little bit cheesier or like something i wouldn't have like maybe picked up okay how do you deal with the influencers hate slash stereotypes i just like don't really care i don't know if this is like the text is in me of like everyone works hard everyone has a job or and i'm just like out of that like kind of clout chasing kind of world not that all of la is like that at all but like obviously there's more of it there and maybe i'm just like tired of explaining it i don't know i obviously know how hard i work how hard we all work and it's legitimately is a career and it's massive and it's the future and whatever but i just like know where to place my energy and that's not really somewhere i want to place my energy and to me for whatever reason it's kind of cringy and i don't know why like the defense of it like non-stop is like i don't know it's like people just don't care like everyone works and honestly i just don't really deal with it because i just don't really care that much even this weekend at the bars i mentioned this in a vlog but my friends one of our guy friends was like literally like, was saying all these really nice things to me but he was like oh but like you don't ever work and i'm like they only see like on instagram what i'm posting on instagram which obviously is not me like sitting here working all the time so um i get why like people would think that if you don't know the behind the scenes whatever but it's like not really my job to like make it make sense to you so yeah, I just don't really care. Oh, by the way, I got lip injections yesterday. They're still swollen and they're bruised, so. Have you ever been through a friendship breakup? If so, how did you move on? I answered a question about this on Instagram stories recently, 
and it's really 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 hard i'm very very grateful how many times am i gonna repetition i am so grateful for the friends that i have in my life and a lot of my friends have been in and out of my life not in a way that like anything bad happened but like there's just periods of time where you're closer with someone and then you're closer with them later or we move away and go to college and then we come back um so i just want to say first off sometimes with growing apart with friendships it's fine and you'll come back together you're just in different spaces that's normal um but with a friendship breakup this sounds like something happened and i haven't ever had i don't in the recent years, I've not had like a friendship blow up breakup. I've definitely just had things where like all of a sudden things got weird and they started talking bad about me and things like that. When I think of like friendship breakup, like my one that like hit the deepest and was the hardest for me was um, in the recent years. And I was honestly just so sad. There was never really discussion. I didn't really know what to do. And I'm sure, again, I know for a fact that like it was obviously not all that person. That I, to me, I don't even really know what that person did besides like also, it takes two to tango. Like, I am sure I did things that were wrong and whatever, but this person was someone who, across the board, couldn't ever have a conversation or, like, communicate at all. And the... Anyway, so there was, like, a lot that happened, and it was really sad for me, and I still would try, and then finally I realized one day that, like, it doesn't matter how much I do, and if I lay my life out on the line and I'm supporting you emotionally, spiritually, financially, like, it literally doesn't matter what I do... I will never do enough in your eyes and like what you are willing to give me back is not even remotely on the same page They literally talked bad about this person like literally went up and talked bad about me to Dom Like my best friend in the entire world and at that point I was like I could call and apologize because like I don't even know where this is coming from And I would have normally done that as I had done before but I was like but I had this moment of realization that, again, nothing I ever did would be enough for this person. And I love this person, adore this person so much. But, like, at the end of the day, I'm just going to keep running myself dry. So I had to make the decision to just be like, I'm done. There's nothing that I can do. I'm over it. Keep in mind, that was honestly over, like, a two-year period of me being, like, trying really hard, can't do anything. I'm going to, anything I say around this person, it's going to be taken wrong. They're going to twist it, like whatever, which is never something you should feel with your friends, literally ever. So it was a really long period of time of me kind of like getting over the friendship, if that makes any sense. I will say something I did learn in this experience is pay attention to the people who are constantly surrounded by turmoil. Like if they constantly have friendship problems or friend group problems or whatever, it's different groups and it's not always the same. Like there is a very good chance it's probably them and not other people. And I don't think people are even like intentional with that all the time. I think, you know, we're all insecure. We're all confused. Your twenties are hard living in different cities. Like it's just a difficult time to be. And I love this person. But at the end of the day, I was like, I will never amount to anything to you. Like I will never be able to do enough. And so I was like, all right, that's it. Like I have gotta be done. I think overall you kind of have to treat it like a breakup though. Um, my experience with this recently obviously was over time so i didn't really like deal with it in one like slump favorite podcast um world's first podcast so good oh my god i love it token ceo um let me look at my podcast obviously it's getting confidential morning toast oh you know what i've been listening to in the chair with justin anderson he doesn't even do it anymore these are episodes from like 2019 but i have been loving it he's also with your media loved it no to sell peyton sarton I'm actually recording for that one tomorrow. Favorite music lately, I've been saying this, but Carter Faith, I'm loving, like absolutely loving. She actually watched the vlogs or did at one point, which is crazy. Um, anything on my Yeehaw Bots playlist. Texas country, a lot of Texas country playlists. I love playing that when I'm home, like in the mornings or the afternoons when I'm cooking, like that's pretty much always what's playing in my house. It's kind of taken over jazz. Like I normally will play jazz music, but that's kind of what I've been going for lately. Been listening to a lot of Best of Britney Spears. Okay, the book that helped you the most in dark times and why. So I thought about this and I think it's actually weirdly enough the defining decade. I don't have another book that like stands out to me enough to I would be able to say that. And I know that the defining decade is a very controversial book and not everyone likes it and it can put a lot of pressure on you. And there's not everything in that book that I agree with, but there's a lot of points that I've taken with me and have really helped me in my early 20s. Like identity capital is something I always talk about. Um, so if you're confused in your 20s, I would recommend it. Favorite thing about Dallas, hands down the people. Um, I love 
the lifestyle here. I love that I can go in and out so I get best of both worlds, but I just love how kind people are. And it's like so community oriented. Like it's, it just has like a very strong sense of community, which I just love. Which platform do you get the most income from? So I actually don't know because my podcast is split with, and then it's like YouTube and Instagram. Basically I have a podcast team and then I have a team for everything else. And I, this year I made more on like YouTube, Instagram and stuff. So I don't know if you're splitting those up between the three, which one would have made the most because it would be kind of probably even. Did you ever struggle financially at once living on your own? How did you manage? Yes, and honestly, I wish I would have talked about this stuff more in the day, back in the day, because at that time, people just like weren't really transparent on YouTube, and I wish I would have talked about this. But there were definitely times, like, I was not like rolling in money. Like, I was making enough, but it was definitely still like stressful times. I think this past two years have been like way more like financially free um but like early days especially when i had my one bedroom in la that was like literally more expensive than my mortgage here that was definitely like a lot harder have you been on a date in the new year if so how would you rate it one to ten because i haven't even been on a date in like I, I literally couldn't tell you how long i said this on tiktok but like i actually went to therapy last week and asked my therapist if there's something wrong with me not that like you need to be with someone but i have no desire to date. I'm not really like super into hookup culture for like myself. Personally, I just don't really like it. Um, not that there's anything, like not that there's literally anything at all wrong with it, like do whatever you want. But like for me, I just don't really like it that much. So I am like, okay, I'm not dating anyone. I'm not into hookup culture. So like I literally have zero interest in like dating, I guess as a whole. And that worries me because I'm like, what if this continues and then I haven't dated in three years and I forget how or is it bad that I like don't want anything at all? Am I gonna get to 28 and still I'm not dated? Like I just have all these fears in the back of my head of like, okay, maybe this isn't good. But I've always been the kind of girl that's like never really looking for it and then I meet someone and then I just like, whatever. It basically just takes me meeting someone. But this is the longest period of time in a long time, in years. But I've also been in relationships though, um, where I have wanted like literally nothing to do with it. Like not even like a fling. Like that is my, I don't know, that's my point. What do you want to achieve with your business slash brand? So with my own like Kinsey Elizabeth stuff this year, my dream is to design a cowboy boot with a brand. I would love to do a cowboy hat. I think that would be so much fun. I want to do more Dallas events. I want to really grow. I want to grow again. I haven't grown in years, so I would love to do that. I really want to focus a lot on TikTok, breadwinning housewife stuff. So we're doing more drops. We have one coming in February, which is really exciting. My stuff actually should be here soon. I want to do a podcast live show. That would be really exciting. I want to get like a breadwinning housewife, like kitchen stuff. Like there's a lot of things I want to do. And then with the Okine, which is my clothing brand, we want to launch one. We wanted to launch in March originally. Then we didn't love samples, so we're being picky. Obviously, we want the best of the best of the best. As of right now, we're shooting for April, and that's if everything goes really well. So we will see. Um, we want to do monthly drops with that, and we'd love to do a pop-up shop somewhere, like for a weekend, whatever. I think that would be really fun. There's a lot of things. Honestly, I feel like I'm in the best place career-wise that I've ever been. Like, have such a clear, like, this is what I want to do. I think, too, like, having... A job where it's like you on the internet especially in like your late teens early 20s is confusing because like you don't really even know who you are so I don't know I feel like now I'm in a place like personally where I'm thriving the most and so I'm also thriving like the most career wise what skills do you want to learn this year or what hobbies do you want to pick up I want to horseback ride a lot more than I have recently I went last month a minute ago I think actually next week I even really want to take lessons like I'm so into that obviously I read all the time I want to get better at cooking I want to get more into that I know there's another one that I like, can't think of right now I'm always picking up hobbies though that's something that has really benefited my life so much I feel like for so long I was just like tunnel vision work and like I wasn't even doing the best that I could be doing because I wasn't in a healthy like headspace mindset and have hobbies and like hobbies improve your career so yeah my goal for this year is 60 books I read 100 last year if you guys need book recs I've been posting like in feed book stuff non-stop on Instagram last question I get this question literally all the time and uh, I guess we'll just get into it a little bit I really don't know even where I'm at, what I want to say, how I feel, I don't want to offend anyone, I don't want to make anyone mad, like there's just so many things that go into it. I'm in therapy like deeply for it right now, so I don't really have the answers, I don't know, I don't know if I'll ever have the answers, I don't know if I'll feel 
how I did five years ago, if I'll feel how I did yesterday. I really have no idea where I will be at. Again, if I ever write a book, this will be a large majority of it, I'm sure. A lot of it's like, um, how is your faith right now? Like literally so many messages and a lot of them are incredibly passive aggressive. Like I said this recently and I wanna say, a lot of it is like, I think a lot of Christians in general are like the meanest on Instagram, but I will go even further and say like, if you live life with the philosophy that like the way you live life in general is the one way to live it. So if you're on either extreme, those are typically the meanest people in general. I experience a lot of the Christians because I feel like I have a lot of them following me because I did go, I did have like more of a background with that. Um, yeah, I think I've definitely taken a really big step back. I am going through my own stuff with it. I really don't have much to share. It's never my intention to bash anything. Like so much of it has, you know, given me such a strong foundation and like friendships and you know, there's so many good things that have come from it and I can recognize like the both and something can be the best and the worst thing that's ever happened to you. And yeah, I just, I don't really want to talk about it. Uh, the living room will never be a thing. I've answered that so many times, guys. Like, literally so many times. Please, please, please stop asking. That will never be a thing. Uh, yeah, I'm just going through my own stuff with it, which is really normal at 24. If you feel like you connect, listen to our episodes with Jessa Hastings. She's helped me so much. But I don't think it's a forever thing. I just am going through my own stuff, you know? It's not really about my relationship with God. It's just other stuff that's happened in my life and you know a lot of my friends are going through it I feel like it's a really common thing and I never want to come out and be disrespectful but I also think you know when I speak about this and I receive thousands of messages of people feeling the same way and saying it's so helpful to know someone feels that way or is going through it as well it's hard because like I do want to share because I wish that I had someone that I was following that could really talk about it in like a healthy way not in a way that's like fuck them blah 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 but um yeah, I mean, it's really hard. It's not something I even expected to, like, get here. I, I think the other thing is that, like, I've heard what people say about people who are where I'm at being in it, the thick of it. And so now knowing that, like, I'm that person and knowing that it's talked about, too, is, like, really frustrating because it's also, like, a very personal thing. I'm not trying to, like, ruin anyone's life or whatever, but, like, it is my experience. It is my story. And a lot of it was really good and a lot of it was really, really bad. And you know, I think that's really common for any like group of people. So with that being said, I don't have the answers. I don't really want to talk about it because I'm not really in a place where I have the answers. I could completely change my mind in six months. You never know with me. So until I'm at more of like a stable place, I'm sure I'll talk about it later. Honestly, this is like stuff to talk about in a book. It's not really stuff to like talk about on YouTube. I don't know, I could change my mind guys. I don't really know, but with that being said, um, I would just appreciate some like boundaries around the topic. I totally understand. I shared a lot about it in the past, but I'm not in that place anymore and I'm allowed to grow and change my mind and go through my own stuff and like to be the healthiest that I can be, I just like want more boundaries around it and I would really appreciate the passive aggressive comments to stop. Like, you're messaging someone like really passive aggressively and your intention is to get them to come back to live how like they live or think how they think which by the way i was always really incredibly progressive in that i was never and i i said that the whole time i, I never felt like i fully fit in because i was never this like super southern conservative like christian girl not that there's anything wrong with that i have so many incredible friends who are that but like that was never me and i always felt like i was being pushed into a box always like literally even when i was in church for a second when i was younger so yeah if you are messaging someone anyone is doing this with the intention of like getting them back and you're like oh they're wrong instead of just like loving them and be like hey love you regardless you're not right like it's just i don't know so anyways i hope you guys enjoyed today's video i love you guys so much um uh, be sure to subscribe it was great just to sit down and catch up and chat with you guys but i love you guys and i will talk to you soon it was like we we're like are each other's accountability partners yes. in like a career setting so in like a personal development yes. career type of way yeah like what can we start doing that other successful people do 